Hi everyone. So today's book talk is from my office because I um, mistakenly deleted the video as I was uploading it uh, into my computer to make it into the YouTube video. So anyway, um, I have to record it again. I'm not in Mrs. Reese's classroom today. So the book that I have for this week is called Pax and the author is Sarah Pennypacker. Um, this is a great book. Um, I'll ask you a question. So have you ever had any pets? If you have, how would you feel if your parents told you you have to get rid of your pet? I'm sure you would be very sad. So this is the story of Peter and his pet, Pax. Pax is a fox, and Peter rescued him when he was just a small kit, and he's lived with him since, so Pax has never been in the wild. Um, well, now a war is coming, and Peter's father has enrolled in the army. Um... So he tells Peter that he's going to have to take Pax back to the wild. And Peter is going to go live with his grandfather. He can't take Pax with him. So they do. They go. They drop him off in the woods. And later when Peter is with his grandfather, he realizes the big mistake that he made and that he should have never let Pax go back to the wild. So he decides he's going to go back and get him. Um, and the story then becomes their journey. You know, what is going to happen to Pax? Can he survive in the wild? Is Peter ever going to find him? Um, you'll have to read the book to find out. I'm going to read to you a part of the book, uh, the part where they go and drop off Pax, to give you an idea about how they're both feeling about it. Okay, it says, <clears throat> The car juddered to a full stop and tilted off to the right, a cloud of dust rising beyond the window. The father reached over the seat again, and after saying something to his son in a soft voice that didn't match his hard lie scent, he grasped the fox by the scruff of the neck. His boy did not resist, so the fox did not resist. He hung limp and vulnerable in the man's grasp, although he was now frightened enough to nip. He would not displease his humans today. The father opened the, do the car door and strode over gravel and patchy weeds to the edge of a wood. The boy got out and followed. The father set the fox down, and the fox bounded out of his reach. He locked his gaze on his two humans, surprised to notice that they were nearly the same height now. The boy had grown very tall recently. The father pointed to the woods. The boy looked at his father for a long moment, his eyes streaming again. And then he dried his face with the neck of his t-shirt and nodded. He reached into his jeans pocket and withdrew an old plastic soldier, the fox's favorite toy. The fox came to alert, ready for the familiar game. His boy would throw the toy and he would track it down, a feat the boy had always seemed to find remarkable. He would retrieve the toy and wait with it in his mouth until the boy found him and took it back to toss again. And sure enough, the boy held the toy soldier aloft and then hurled it into the woods. The fox's relief, they were only here to play the game, it made him careless. He streaked toward the woods without looking back at his humans. If he had, he would have seen the boy wrench away from his father and cross his arms across his face. And he would have returned. Whatever his boy needed, protection, distraction, affection, he would have offered. Instead, he set off after the toy, finding it was slightly more difficult than usual, as there were so many other fresher orders in the woods, but only slightly. After all, the scent of his boy was also on the toy. That scent he could find anywhere. The toy soldier lay face down at the burled root of a butternut tree, as if he had pitched himself there in despair. His rifle, its butt pressed tirelessly against his face, was buried to the hilt and leaf litter. The fox nudged the toy free, took it between his teeth, and rose on his haunches to allow his boy to find him. In the still woods, the only movements were bars of sunlight glinting like green glass through the leafy canopy. He stretched higher. There was no sign of his boy. A prickle of worry shivered up the fox's spine. He dropped the toy and barked. There was no response. He barked again and again, was answered by only silence. If this was a new game, he did not like it. He picked up the toy soldier and began to retrace his trail, 
As he loped out of the woods, a, a jay streaked in above him, shrieking. The fox froze, torn. His boy was waiting to play the game. But birds! Hours upon hours, he had watched the birds from his pen, quivering at the sight of them, slicing the sky as recklessly as the lightning he often saw on summer evenings. The freedom of their flight always mesmerized him. The jay called again, deeper in the forest now, but answered by a chorus of reply. For one moment, the fox hesitated, peering into the trees for another sight of the electric blue wedge. And then, behind him, he heard a car door, a car door slam shut, and then another. He bounded at full speed, heedless of the briars that tore at his cheeks. The car's engine roared to life, and the fox skidded to a stop at the edge of the road. His boy rolled down the window, his boy rolled the window down and reached his arms out. And as the car sped away in a pelting spray of gravel, the father cried out the boy's name, Peter. And the boy cried out the only other name the fox knew, Pax. And I'll stop right there. Again. So if you want to find out what happens, if Peter finds Pax, if Pax is able to survive in the wild or not, then you'll have to read this book to find out. If you do give it a try, I hope you enjoy it.